Well, it finally happened. Today on the bench we have an ECM from Chris, one of two ECMs that I fixed for him. And this one, well, one was good. This one makes the car, once, well, the car won't start, which is something that is to be expected when the soldering is messed up or the chip itself has been damaged. I went through the footage of the repair and couldn't find anything conclusive. What I do suspect is I didn't lower the temperature on my iron when I was reworking the chip and perhaps I just fried the chip. On the other hand, the chip, uh, the one fuel injector takes about 15 watts of, of power when it opens. There's six of them, so that's a lot of power that needs to go through that chip. So I doubt it's actually damaged, but I'm going to replace it with a new one nevertheless. Um, I had this issue happen to me on, on my car. Um, and I was just reworking with some cheap soldering iron that I got off eBay for like eight bucks or something. I was just reworking the bottom pins, so the, the one that is that is responsible for cylinder six. And so I didn't touch the rest of the chip, I didn't desolder the chip, just reworked the pins. And that helped for like a, for like a day or two. And then the car wouldn't start exactly the same as here. Although when I pressed on it after my soldering, when I pressed on it, I could uh, see the difference. Uh, the car would either try to start or, or actually start and then just die after a while. So I'm not sure how exactly messed up soldering on the chip affects the car in the way that it just won't start. It's not like there's a misfire maybe of two cylinders instead of one. It just plainly won't start. No, no reaction, no, no ignition at all. So that, that makes me curious about, about this chip. But I think the, our best bet is to just replace the chip. I do think that, because I looked at the, at the footage, at the soldering, it's not perfect, but it's, it's far from messed up. So um, I really don't think that the soldering is an issue. The only thing I could I could see was that I was working on uh, with three three eighty on soldering iron when I was reworking the chip. Maybe it overheated, uh, and usually I drop to two eighty when I work on the when I rework the chip because you don't need that much temperature, and it's uh, it's a great rule of thumb that you you use the lowest temperature that you can to achieve to get the job done. So even when it seems simpler or easier to work with higher temperature, it's always the best bet to use the lowest uh, temperature possible. So let's see it. Okay, let's dig into it. Excellent packaging as always. It's the same box actually, but now it contains only one ECM. Packaged really well, nevertheless. Okay. There you go. A little tape over here. Perfect. Okay, Mr. Black Car. Yeah, that was the the first one I was working on. Hmm. Okay, let's see you and what I noticed on the previous video is 
that was the one with this weird discoloration here. You probably can see it here, but we'll look at it under the microscope. Well, it hasn't changed since the last time. Um, but I'm thinking maybe it's just some... Um, what do you call it? Some unlucky part that hasn't been soldered really well or... Okay, this is... Well, this is the... This is the one. Uh, why is my camera crooked like this? Okay, that should be better. Yeah, what is that? Maybe it was exposed to something afterwards. No idea. But let's see the soldering job on the chip. Very nice. Why have you failed me? Hmm. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Um, first, let's get rid of the chip. Clean the board. Then solder on new chip. Send it back. And hopefully now it will work. Well, there goes my 100% um, success rate. <laughs> well, it had to happen eventually. You can't, you can't have 100% success rate in anything, pretty much. Eventually, you're gonna mess it up. Unfortunately. Okay, I didn't expect this, did I not hold it under UV light long enough or was just uh, the layer too large and the UV couldn't penetrate deep. Both options are possible. I'll keep it under UV this time much longer. But in this case, it actually works for me because uh, it's easier to remove than it would when it's, uh, if it was completely set. On the other hand, I don't think this is conductive in any way because it's always used for insulating and stuff. But perhaps if it doesn't set, maybe maybe it was, but no, there's no way this is in any way conductive. Okay, so yeah, that definitely wasn't the best, uh, the best insulation. Um, so that's a mess up number one. Maybe let's try with the cheap Q-tip first. Normally I would give it uh, out the temperature and it would come off easily. But since it's not perfectly set, yeah, that works well. Just some alcohol and, and some patience.
Okay, cheap Q-tip. It's getting a job done. That's nice. Yeah, I don't like the soldering on here. Or, okay, it's just covered by the, okay, that's why. It's covered by the mask. Not Elon, it's UV mask. <clears throat> now let's get the good stuff. I don't want to scrape it with uh, tweezers because I don't want to damage any traces. So if it's not if it's not gonna come off, I'm just gonna blow somewhere on it, and that should get the job done. Yeah, the soldering on this one could be better, and that's one of the injectors. This side over here, oh, you can see it. This side over here looks very well. And uh, this one, no, yeah, it could have been better. Maybe I just messed up soldering on it. Where right, it looked good under on the footage. Now looking at it, I would definitely rework those two pins over here. And this is some kind of signal, no, that's a sound, there's capacitor here, and the resistors, two resistors over here, so that's probably a divider. <coughs> so this is probably uh, power for the chip. Now it can be power, because it's over 80 watts on this chip, so that can be power. Uh, maybe some sensing signal. Again, I mentioned it in every video, but if anyone has a data sheet, data sheet for this uh, for this chip, definitely let me know. I'll buy it if need be. No problem. Okay, now let's get some hot air. Four and a half and a hundred degrees Celsius. That is one strong mask. Let's touch it a little with these ears. Okay, there you go. Yeah. And this one. There's still some stuff over here.
Alrighty. Alright, I heated up a capacitor a little bit, but luckily it's only 100 degrees, they are rated to, I think, oh, 85 are those regular ones, 105 those high frequency ones, so I don't expect anything to happen to it, well actually the worst and the only thing that can happen to it is that it explodes in your face, that's not fun. I do have replacement though, so I'm not too worried if it does explode, but I would prefer it doesn't, <laughs> obviously. Big guy. flux on it, just to make it a little bit easier. Like that. Start blowing. Oh, you know what I forget? What I always forget? And I only remember as soon as I get a big half of <laughs> the smoke. Ah. Mm. There. Okay. 
even created this other bridge over here. So that was a bit too much solder on that one. And it looks like not enough solder on these bottom ones. Unless the chip took most of it. Oh, it took some. Yeah, that was enough solder, definitely. It's not like it didn't make good connection. Um, now, first let's prep the board. Mm. Let's try 280, but it's not going to be enough. And while the board is still hot, it might. I was thinking of putting a little bit more solder this time on the ground pin, but I don't want to make too many changes to my process based on one failure, because it could be unrelated. Maybe that chip was at the end of its life already, and the act of heating it destroyed it. Could be. Ugly. Hmm. It's weird. Maybe I just should improve the solder I use. It's not doing its job.
and cleaning. Alrighty. Okay, it's not going to get any better. Now... Here and let's get a brand new spanking job. Brand spanking. Our spanking brand new. Whatever works. I kept two of these for such occasion. Um, and now I ordered six more because I'm thinking maybe now I'll start replacing chips on, on these boards instead of working with all ones.
Oh. And 21 won't cut it. two ventilation holes and that's no big deal. Let's see if I can fix it. But first let's see the, how much solder is on the on the joints. too much solder on the ground pen but the pins look good um, uh, pens look good so let's get rid of some of that extra solder over here Soak that up. Okay. Flow over here a little. Uh, it's just sticking to the iron. There. That's better. Flux burns very quickly. Just get rid of those bulges so the chip can sit nicely on it. Mm. That's good. 
and this. Up. Let go. Let go. Okay, the bulges are gone. Now, let's position the chip and see what's up. position chip um, has been positioned a bit too early and there is some flex on there but let's get some more Position it again. If I can hold it. Okay. To the left and to the right. And to the left. And left some more. And that looks good. That's gonna start jump, jumping anyway. So. But let's do three and a half. And at 371, that's fine. for how long oh. it really doesn't want to sit in place Actually, it looks like it's in place. Mm 
Okay, let's wait for it to cool down a bit. Okay. Now, let's give it a nice cleaning and see if it indeed is not in place. Because it really didn't want to do that. Alrighty. And now inspection. Not nearly enough other, but now I just want to know if it's if it's sitting in place correctly, and it is on this side, and it is on this side. perfectly aligned but you can really align it better just using your hands okay so now let's put some solder on the joints um, I've got to fix the camera somehow so it holds the position okay works generously and I'll do one side at the time on the 320 that should be enough do it in one go
And let's see what the knife is then. Because I usually like to work every pin individually, but this definitely saves a lot of time. This method. And you know, I can see that definitely more work is required. Now let's see. Get this uh, the second one from the left. Definitely had a bit too much solar, but that's fine. Yeah, let's get it over here. Yeah, so let's do. Uh, we work on a single pin. This guy over here. Temperature, I'll try maybe with higher temperature on the next one, the next side. there's more than not enough and I just realized I think that pin is not my NC um, so yeah I think that that pin is NC okay well all right now let's try this side oh, I'm just gonna be definitely or maybe I can do it this way. Let's try this way. Maybe I can deliver it from my left hand. Like that. And... <coughs> Oh, this method is actually easier on this side. Let's get 
bit of field extraction maybe. It's a little bit uh, easier because I can maneuver my iron a little bit easier. And it's on at this angle. Working pin by pin, it's a little more tricky. But let's try from this side. Yeah, that should be a lot easier now. Okay, I'm not sure about this one, but let's clean it up and see what's actually going on. Definitely there's one pin over here. And this doesn't look like it's rather well. And these look very nice. These, yeah, these look really nice. Mm. And the left side. And then Mm -hmm. 
pretty good there. Hmm. I'm kind of worried about this first on uh, these things. You probably can see that, but it kind of feels like they could use it a little bit more. Okay, but first, um, first this sign, open number second from the right. So let's put it this way, and second from the right. Yeah, you could you could see it from this perspective too that it's it's really shy and sonar. I wonder why that one didn't want to swallow, swan sonar. Mm -hmm. sure about some of these so let's do the individual like three or four on the right over here three or four pens on the right here they didn't look that great to me This chip <clears throat> has never seen solder before, so I really want to make sure that everything's soldered nicely. So I keep the iron a little bit longer than usually to make sure that it heats up nicely. And where does this one look from this perspective? Looks like it has not enough. Let's see. Let it heat up nicely, the pod. So, so it makes good connection. Alrighty. That should do it. Mm, now actually let's use use heavy cleaning equipment. Right under the nail. <laughs> yeah. 
I should be wearing gloves for all this. Because it's not that healthy to, to be touching <clears throat> let it solder and all my flux and everything. Not that great. the entertaining thing and watch it dry. Slowly by itself. And the music you guys hear is by Wintergatten, the Swedish band. If you never heard of the band, you probably have heard about Martin and uh, Marble Machine. He's working on his third machine, gaining knowledge from previous two attempts. Although both machines actually did play, well, they were just not reliable, timing wasn't tight enough, uh, losing some marbles and that kind of stuff. So after two tries, now he's making his third attempt, and it looks like this time, this time I'm hopeful <laughs> it should work. Although watching him making uh, a marble machine X, um, I thought that one was, was going to work. Because the first one you just use plywood and stuff, obviously that's not going to be something reliable. But the second one, everything welded, aluminum, steel, some 3D printed parts and stuff, epoxy, like good materials. But Usually with stuff like that you can only you can only see if it works after you build it. <laughs> see what the issues are. So that's pretty high bar for a musician. But musicians actually make very good engineers in my experience. Martin is one example. I also work with musicians uh, in the engineering field and yeah, they're they pick up very quickly and they build on the, the ideas. So that leads me to believe that musicians make actually pretty good engineers. Okay, this looks dry. Now let's do one last inspection.
Am I flux or alcohol? Because it looks like flux to me. now I don't know why I didn't do it before it's not gonna be needed for anything uh, let's see this guy yeah I know that looks like there's flux left that doesn't look like alcohol will it be evaporating this slowly Definitely doesn't look like alcohol. Let's give it one more clean. Because that could have been also the, the reason for previous failure. If, if I didn't clean it well enough and then alcohol left or a flux left in there. The flux that I use is um, activated flux so it's a little bit corrosive so it's very important to get rid of all of it so maybe in the previous repair I left some that's why the UV mask didn't set or I left some flux and it messed it up Either way, this time I'm not taking any chances, so everything needs to be cleaned very well. And I'll leave it under UV for, I don't know, for as long as, as the battery allows. <laughs> I tried to disassemble uh, this UV light. I bought a new one, but this one st uh, suffers from pretty much the same issue. You just gotta hit it a few times for it to start working. So I wanted to just hook it up to the power supply, right? It is built in such a way that you can get into it without an angle grinder. <laughs> or like special specialized tool for removing bearings and stuff but it would have to be like miniature version of that the, the parts basically are pressed together the body of the uv uv array so it's like i'm sure that that is not an effort to make repair harder it's probably because the manufacturing process is easier than using like screws or something like that you can just press them together they stay they stay uh, you know it, the, the construction stays very solid right so I'm sure that's not the anti rights to repair stuff nevertheless I didn't expect uh, I didn't expect it to be to be this difficult to open it's a $10 UV light well, maybe that's the reason, because <laughs> it's $10 UV light. Probably. 
let me show you. Uh, so this is the side. I can catch a focus on it. There, without showing you my nasty fingers. Uh, this looks a lot better. So that must have been flux. I'm glad I caught it, because this could have been the same, the same issue we had before. Okay, and this side also looks pretty clean, and this side. Okay, that looks good to me. So, let's give it a few more minutes so it dries nicely. I don't see any flux, so it's good. Yeah, maybe I was just rushing too much in the previous repair. It's not like I wanted, I had a goal to, to do two ECMs in two hours. I was just kind of working regular, maybe a little higher speed than usual and maybe I just rushed it too much and that was the issue or I fried the chip or maybe the chip was already at the end of its life difficult to say or that um, and that flux maybe was left behind and that was the issue too bad I still can't test those. I started working on the, on the device to test it. But there's always something more important to, to be done. And this is just my hobby, so you know I can't really afford to spend days on end working on the diagnostic equipment. Especially since I could buy it on eBay for like, what was it, $550, something like that. At certain time or especially at certain point in your career, you just start valuing time more than money. So yeah, when I was in my 20s, I was definitely spend weeks to save uh, 500 bucks. Now I just prefer to buy the device and, and save myself uh, a lot of time. On the other hand, that is uh, a good um, practice. You know, you learn a lot by you know, testing. That's why I got these ECMs, working ECMs for like 30 bucks from eBay. And I test on those because this one, you know, this one you can't get anywhere other than the manufacturer for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason is. But they're unobtainable on eBay. Okay, let's get the mask ready.
Alright, it looks clean. And it looks dry as well. Just in case I'm not blown. But it looks like it's as dry as it's gonna get. Is that her? That is a nice thin layer. for a while.
those trucks. I live in the mountains, so everybody has a big truck or a Subaru. Uh, they started in the morning to warm up the engine and I just choke with uh, diesel fumes. And these are big engines, 6.7 liter. Dang. That's, uh, you know, when they start it up, you can feel the whole building shaking. We call it the tank, the guy that has the car like that. The neighbor, we call, it, we call him the tanker, the tank man. Just in case. I don't want any mishaps with this one. That would be awful if it came back again with either misfire or car not started. Let's see how long it has been. An hour and 23 minutes. So definitely a little longer than the previous one. But actually, it should be even a little bit quicker because I didn't have to clean the clean the chip, and that always takes a little bit. It's small, flimsy, hard to mount, to clean, and all that. But this should be a faster. Okay, let's see the UV. And I shined it in my eye. That's not good. I don't know if the first layer sets, does the UV penetrate any further or am I just wasting time? which is basically just putting it in the box and sending it off. Um, so I think I'm gonna cut it here. Uh, Chris again, sorry for this, um, but it had to happen eventually. 
Uh, I hope this one will actually fix the problem and uh, the black car will work like new. And thank you guys very much for watching. If you're watching, if you're not bored to death by this. And I shall see you in the next one.